And here we are. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Hi, Janice. Hi, Katie. So we're all here. We are. Together. Janice is I know. in matchy matchy. We are. You're here in California. I know I am. Yeah. Well, yes. let's, we're back. Let's see. Let's pull these comments up so we can see there. Sheila's saying hello. She's happy to be here hello. and to hello, Hi, fellow bead lovers. And Let's see. Let's see who we have. Pam is super stoked. There we are. All right. Hi, Pam. Good one. Um, let's see. This is a nice one. Kathy, thank you so much. She's saying she's so happy about how fast it takes to get her orders out. I got her big, she got her big box yesterday mm. and she loves the ultimate bead design board. Oh, it's Along my with faith. everything yes. else. So thank you so much for those very kind words. Let me see if I can find that there. Let me adjust this so we're not. There we go. We've got okay. a little shoot, less shoot from above space, That's right? What Bev always right. says up from and up here. And you don't see the <laughs> right here. Here we go. Right. All right. Well, here we go. Okay. Um, we've got a lot to get to. We today. do. We do. So Janice made this really cool piece, you guys. And I'm actually while Janice is, um, we're we're we have so many pieces here right so what are we doing we've got i guess we'll just we'll just start so do you want to start with i'm gonna we'll move the camera yeah and we'll start with this business over here so okay. i'm gonna just so feel free to we haven't done this with two people lately For right while, yeah. so sorry about this very elegant here as we move this around but see so see where you are right there so okay. you're over here. So, I so I'm going to move this over. Okay. And we're going to lift this okay. up. So see that? See where you are? Yeah. Let me add it in so you guys can see it. There we go. Oh, there we so go. So you okay. see where you are. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's let's just there we go. Take this out of the way. Okay. I'll move that. Now I'm a person here. who wears three pairs of glasses. Actually, okay. four. So I'm on pair number two, okay. which is not my long distance okay. and not my beating, but my intermediate. Okay. So well, I if I you. squint or anything, <laughs> that's what's that's going why. on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to uh, solo this and you could, but before we get started with this and you can see this pretty well, I just wanted to mention uh, you guys, of course, uh, you can find everything that we're doing today on our website at beadshop.com. Um, Janice is usually across the miles on the oh. other side of the USA um, moderating, but today, and our Gita, who usually moderates over on Facebook, is also out today. So you've got the two of us, but you can find us over at beadshop.com on our Instagram. You can check out our Facebook group, The Bead Table, on Facebook. We'd love to have you join us over there. And of course, if you are watching on our YouTube channel, you can hit like and subscribe right now at beadshop.com. Dot com And if you're watching on the re replay, thank you so much for joining in. And of course, you guys, and I'll show you this again, but you can shop everything that Janice is using today at the project called Adobe um, mm -hmm. right on our website at beadshop.com. So Janice, why don't you talk a little bit about what you've got there and then, uh, then we'll jump in. Okay. So this project really started out, um, I'm going to use the all for this, mm -hmm. so, um, with this little infinity knot here, which is done with a silk wrap, I, I don't know where the idea came from, but I thought, why not create a, a project where we use, you know, the leather just go around and around, and then you've been showing so much with I know I've been wrapping. on a kind of a silk wrap kit right. lately. And then I also brought this one in to show how the same kind of knot can be done with the flat macrame stitch, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. And then for those who don't want to even bother learning that, you can even just use uh, one of our uh, sliders like this one. I'm going to move that up to, just a little okay, bit. Okay, to, 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 crimp, to crimp the two pieces of leather. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is you want one side to fit your button. So mm -hmm. you want to fit right, you know, whatever the button size is. In this case, it fits this wonderful button. Um, 
I'm not sure if we have this mm -hmm. one anymore. I don't think it. So this fits this button. Mm -hmm. And so I started out with this and I looped through one of our wonderful, um, uh, one of our uh, serpentine jade mm -hmm. discs. And this is all done with wax linen. It's, mm -hmm. It's a project that begs for wax linen. You can use it though um, with Ceylon, but wax linen just it just it's it perfect. completes it really nicely. Right. right? So this is um, this one was done with this bracelet, and it's in um, our Trails End, and mm -hmm. it's called Bally Malou, and it was inspired by my um, my family in Ireland. I know I don't look Irish. But I do have family in Ireland, and I made this for my niece, Jess, in the greens. And um, I love the lotus and the briolette. So yeah. that, was, that was almost the first project we mm -hmm. did. So I'll put that over here. And then um, that, uh, that then inspired another project, which is called Prairie. Mm -hmm. And this was... Um, where we use the flat leather. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm yeah, going to keep go. looking at the camera. Where we we took the flat leather and then we macrameed on it. Um, this is one that you did that I really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did both of those. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, yep. because they're all shadows. Yeah, but course. I particularly like this one because yeah, you that used one, the foundry. It's yeah, called, right? and you use two different kinds of beads mm -hmm. and two different kinds of Ceylon. Mm -hmm. And it just with that little light blue edge, it's just, mm -hmm. it's really lovely. And then you use the little um, special, use delivery too, special delivery. Mm -hmm. um, Which I like a lot. Yeah. So that this is a multi wrap. It's probably five wraps. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple to make. Mm -hmm. So in this project, you could just do the leather, the flat leather wrap. Mm -hmm. You could just do the um, the, the bracelet bead, portion. the bead bracelet, mm -hmm. or you can do both. Mm -hmm. And so let me put up so you guys can see just real quick. Um, this is the piece right here, and you can see it right on our homepage as well. But this is the piece that Janice created. I know you're going to show another piece uh, that I did a while back mm -hmm. that's kind of a riff on this. Mm -hmm. But you can see how Janice used kind of that prairie style. Uh, it's to the right here, and then to the left is the bracelet portion. Right. And we're actually going to be finishing off the bracelet portion right. in a little bit. So. So what I want to start with, Kate, mm -hmm. is color, mm -hmm. because that's where I always start. Mm -hmm. Everyone uh, that, that for as many years as I've been beating mm -hmm. has said, um, where do you start? And I always say, if you get the color right, the design will follow. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a piece that you made. I did. And you may actually made the beads. There. I did. Um, you used to teach a class at the bead shop. And also mm -hmm. at Bidissimo, didn't you? Honestly? I did, but this was really a bead shop. Um, I did it maybe a little bit at my store, but we did this in bead shop. Um, it was imitatives. You know, we used polymer clay. I used polymer clay to make the imitative I um, show beads. These beads. Yeah, sort of. but lift them. You can lift okay. them pretty high, yeah, and true. it'll. Yeah, there you go. And so this is all polymer. And I took um, a class way back in the day from Tori. It'll come to me. I'll have to look it up. Why can't I think of her name? It's, um, uh, it'll come to me. Okay. Uh, 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 but while you're looking at the up Tori, mm -hmm. I want to just point out that these now these silver beads you didn't make and the pendant you didn't make, no. but all of these are made of uh, polymer clay. Mm -hmm. They look like old ivory. They look like old copal, which is African amber. Tori Hughes, sorry Tory about Hughes. that. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like old turquoise. Mm -hmm. um, and you took it, you really took it to a fine art. Oh, thank you, you. You did. And you even created a bead. Here's inlaid with turquoise, mm -hmm. which is very typical of uh, Tibetan. And it's just, and then there's one bead where you did what they did, which is they. You have it on your bracelet. Oh, it's on the bracelet I'm mm -hmm. wearing. Kate also made this. Where Get they, a little. Oh, sorry. There you go. Um, 
where Kate actually uh, mimicked what they would do with the old beads that were cracking and falling apart. They would wire them together. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just... And they would fill it with pitch and put little yeah. pieces of coral and little pieces of turquoise. So all of this is polyamor clay. Yeah. And this is... It was a really fun, fun yeah. class to do. And so um, Tori Hughes, you can look her up. She's since passed away a, a few years ago. She was really a very, very gifted instructor, and she has a great book on it from years ago, but um, it, it was a fun one. So mm -hmm. that also, did you want to show this book at all, Janice? I do. Okay. I do. Do you want to open to the pages sure. while I just... And so that, my... the, the colors that we were using um, yeah. in there, and look at Robert Lou. Sign that way back. Remember when he came to well, the store? Well, we're looking at it, but they can't yeah. see it. Well, I'm just showing you. Okay. I don't know if you want to start it. <laughs> well, show them the book. You thumb okay. through it. Okay. And actually, I'm going to move this out of the okay. way for now so that we can. And I, I just want to apologize to everyone watching yeah, no, today. No, you're, you're this way. <laughs> I <laughs> so haven't done okay. this in a there really long time. And um, it's all good, JP. Um, I never apologize, like Julia Child says. Who's to know? That's true. Okay. Yeah. So this book was by Robert Liu, who also uh, was has passed editor. away. No, no. No, he still... has. Sorry, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. <laughs> he, he was the it, editor of Ornament Magazine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not embellishments? Mm -hmm. Ornament. Ornament. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, this is so great. Can you all see this? This is BBC. Mm -hmm. oh, you're a great back. store. Yeah. And, and then he, I want to show them the, oh, okay. the front, the front, sorry, the front piece. Sorry. There's to Kate. Yeah. yeah. And in 1996, so this is when he came to, he actually came to the bead shop. Mm -hmm. I bought this book from him and he did a talk for us at the Palo Alto mm -hmm. bead shop so many years ago. So if you're not uh, familiar with ornament magazine, you can see, um, he has been collecting beads and photographing beads for the majority of his uh, career. So, And the history um, of beads. And Ornament Magazine is still a thing, so you can go. I know that some of you um, love it as much as we do, so um, you can And this is ideas after. I mean, everywhere you look is a history of... Um, let me just pull this up a little bit for yeah, those. No, of, we can just put the okay camera down. for those of you who do seed bead work. Mm -hmm. I mean the designs in here of mm -hmm. patterns, um, but I wanted to get to that page that had. Oh, look at these textures! Right, I know, oh, so good. I think where? it's there's one that's whoops, wasn't that far really? But we. But the, the the inspiration for me was the mm -hmm. Tibetan turquoise, the coral, the antique ivory, mm -hmm. um, and There's the copal, the African copal. Um, That's a beautiful yeah. one there. And then here are these beads um, that how different. I mean, in, we're no longer able to get these yes, seeds anymore old. yeah so we're not teasing you um we're really <laughs> informing you and hopefully we're going to do a class sometime yeah maybe it'd be on, fun to do on that how to make these beads mm -hmm. um but this is a great book if you can find a copy in an old bookstore um uh, they're pretty hard to find now yeah, and then let me just show collection. this one here oh yeah look at that with these real z beads mm -hmm. beautiful um which are so rare and we'll we'll give you a shot of the the cover yeah in, in a few okay so the cover is uh collectible beads by robert Lou. yes yeah and robert i send my regards <laughs> to you i'm yes. sorry <laughs> he was so you can see right here on the cover too see some of that so yeah. these two right here yeah those are beads from tori hughes i know oh. that tori made those these are polymer here. Well, I'm going to look and see. I bet she's in here. There she should was, be a bead of, she, she was did frequently, Robert Lou, like Yeah, she was frequently. In the yeah, she was frequently in Ornament Magazine. Here we go. Here's a 
I knew it was in here. Okay. So here's some of her work, those imitatives. And I took a class from her back probably in 93, the year that I went to the very first embellishments mm-hmm. conference that then turned into Beat and Button. Mm-hmm. But Tori and I kind of meshed during that class. And then we had dinner and we chatted. And so it was it was really cool. She was a very, very wonderful, gifted mm-hmm. artist. So again, these are all polymer imitatives. And it's interesting, you know, it's hard to get like this red coral and stuff nowadays. And when it is, it's very rare and it's very dear. So it's interesting to be able to make pieces like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just fun working with your hands that mm-hmm. way too. So mm-hmm. anyway, I'll get that out of the way. Okay, we'll do that next time. Polymer will uh, make its way. We're going to bring. We're going to bring it back. back. Yes, we yes. Want. So, would you like your little um, your uh, my little what your what are you reaching for your tray oh. here? Because for the tray, do you want to put your tray down to work on? What do you? Oh, I was going to. Can okay. I use this? It is this background though, kind of fools with oh, the camera a okay. little bit, which is okay. why I'm going to. You know, you. I slightly remember that that burlap is not the best mm-hmm. for, but then I thought, oh, you know, it's very textured, and mm-hmm. we like really textured. So okay, there we go. Okay, so let's before we use the gray background, let me bring mm-hmm. first the the first part of adobe and we'll go over um together Mm -hmm. um so i like i said i picked these colors based on you know the old silk road the things that came out of Mm -hmm. um you know afghanistan and pakistan Mm -hmm. and um it's actually very timely now that we're honoring those things um and the and the jewelry we used to be able mm-hmm. to get from you know um kabul and mm-hmm. and yep, the pakistani Persia, and yeah. afghanistan so and indian jewelry yeah. that is i'm really, wearing an old old yeah show piece, us this one that yeah piece here this is um old with Persian. the inlaid yeah with the, the inlaid. inlaid is that coral yeah. or glass it looks uh, like coral it might have been yeah or, or it might have been based. yeah or something that was yeah. put in there but this piece is about 100 years yeah. old but yeah. i thought it was very timely to to work with today so this this is where i started i just love this uh this button mm-hmm. um it's not mandalay uh uh the mandala button mandala mm-hmm. you know when you get to 72 you're lucky <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I I started with this button, and I'll show you uh, how I did it. And it's multiple strands. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one, two, I think it's eight. Eight strands. Thank you, Kate. Mm-hmm. And then in some places, I knotted them together, and I did that, the in and out, which I really love doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there are no rules to doing this. Mm-hmm. Um Probably the only two things that I would mention is start out uh, uh, with smaller beads and, and also, you know, end with smaller beads. But so I they taper a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And then where you have something that is really significant, you know, important beads, think about where the placement is. Mm-hmm. Um It's very easy to get excited and put all those um, spindle turquoise spindle beads up mm-hmm. here, which um, I'm not saying I started doing, but then I sort of forgot about them a little bit. And mm-hmm. then I came down here. And I said, oh, I better put more back in. But the leaves sort of helped in the middle mm-hmm. to add that chunkiness um, to the piece. So when I design, Kate, mm-hmm. what I do is I work on one strand at a time mm-hmm. and I work on it until I don't know what to put on next. Right. Until you want to switch lanes. Yeah, exactly. So I work on it. And then when I go, I don't know what to do next. Then I start on another one until it tells me I don't know what to, I don't know what to do Mm -hmm. and so forth. And that's basically how I design. I, I like to make sure that my colors are fairly balanced, Mm -hmm. that these, these are actual ostrich shells. I was telling uh, Jordan and Myra, how after ostriches um, have babies, mm-hmm. the shells are of the ostrich, newborn ostrich, are actually 
made they're recycled and made into beads. made into beads and yeah it's an old, old yeah. it's an old style of bead yeah. that's still being made yeah. today which is gorgeous and what i like about this piece too janice is one of the things that you know when you've got this little um this little uh palette here that's out with your mm -hmm. beads here as you lay your beads out and kind of like i did the other week if you kind of trust that your color palette is cohesive here however you string it here on this section is going to work mm -hmm. right if the palette works here trust mm -hmm. that it'll work there mm -hmm. it's yes. great and i wanted to bring in also just one more spot of color mm -hmm. which is this really pretty uh blue lagoon mm -hmm. ceylon mm -hmm. and then i i i felt like it was going to really work with the um the prairie flat blue um, leather strap mm -hmm. over there. So this you, one right here. Oh, that one. There yeah. Is. So it just, it just all comes together. Mm -hmm. I think in a modern day twist, um, on an old Tibetan necklace. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Well, I love the polymer clay yeah. pieces. They were really fun. So we'll, we'll think about, uh, how we're going to translate those over. Um, okay. So, so what do you want to start with? I think we should just start with where we actually started, mm -hmm. which is with the the button. showing that length. Yeah, and, and then let me show you here. Um, let me put it here, okay. and I want to grab this guy just okay. real quick because I want to show you you all how the the length of this piece. So this one door to door and. And the way that this is going to wrap, okay, this, the beading portion is about seven inches. But what's going to happen here, because see this transition here, how Janice brought it all up through this bead, and then it comes through here with this silk wrap. And then she started this section of just two strands of the 1.5 millimeter um, leather. So this will wrap, so this beading section, you can have as long or as short as you want it to be. Okay, you could also extend this into a necklace length. If you're like, yeah, I love bracelets, but I really, I wanna be challenged with a necklace, you could do that as well. And then the way that these will wrap around and wrap around, there'll be a variety of the, right. the macrame pieces all the way around. So maybe we would do this with three wraps and finish it off here. You could ladder in part mm -hmm. of it if mm -hmm. you wanted. You could. Yeah. Um, do another section of beads again. Yeah. I mean, it's and so this great as the bracelet here that I'm showing. Mm -hmm. You would just stack it with right the prairie right. here, right? So that would be stacked. So you'll have a lot of arm candy here. And then Janice, you brought one more. Oh, I brought a a, a, a couple. There was this one right which with the it's just on memory wire. We have so many projects. And then that raccoon. And then the raccoon. It's like we have. Right. So you a, could make a big arm statement with yeah, these. It's yeah. a similar palette. It's, mm -hmm. you know, that um, Tibetan amber, coral, right. lapis. turquoise, lapis. Yeah. Lapis, yes. Mm -hmm. Lapis. Lapis. Forgot um, about lapis. I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm going to. You're going to put me on the spot soon. I know. So I'm going to so just. Uh, I'm going to figure out what the heck I'm doing. So, for the for for the bracelet that I uh, created here, um, Adobe, I cut four pieces of the uh, country uh, country red. Mm -hmm. Here's my little. Is this got this? Yeah. Let me make sure this is going to fit around this. And I love, just love these um, clamps. Mm -hmm. The clampers. Yeah. And if I can, I don't know if everyone can see this, but my little kind of trade secret is to put the clamp inside mm -hmm. the button loop or inside the loop of the cotton. Mm -hmm. Um it just it holds it better. I don't know why it's just really firm. So then I go down to this end um, and it's actually a little um, short. I cut this shorter so I'm gonna go sideways today. 
and let's go there and then on this side um, and I'll show you how I do this. I do this also the same way that I do the do leather. I'll show you both ways. Um, I will only clamp I will only clamp one side here of the leather. I don't like to clamp both because then I get a, a big so I'll go like that. Can everyone see mm -hmm. that? So I, and then it'll go here like this. Mm -hmm. And if I need to, I put a spool underneath to hold it up. And that's how I do it. So I just do it on the outside of the board mm -hmm. or the inside of the board. But I try not to do outside and inside because you'll get this really um, per, almost a permanent a ridge bump. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can take that out of the way. Um, and then I just did, and we've done this like a hundred, a hundred plus thousand times mm -hmm. is flat macrame just, um, up through here mm -hmm. and, um, I'll do it again. I'm going to just use a different color and I, I love the thread snips for this project. Um, they are just like the handiest tool. I've tried cutting the the wax linen with cutters, uh, with scissors, and it's these snips that are golden. So that's what I highly recommend. You need about 20 inches of uh, Ceylon, and you could do this with your wax linen. It, you don't have to do it with Ceylon. You mm -hmm. can do it. And then I'm just, you know, going to go at Kate's speed and... Um, I try to make them as even as possible. And for those of you out there who forget uh, which side you're on, I like to say that I know the next side I'm supposed to do is the side that has the loop. I'm going to go grab this. So, okay, so I'm going to just put in, I think I put in six full stitches. Um, I like to go to the end, at least the end of the button so that I clear the button. And then I have enough stitches that I'm able to do the Ali Mori Save Yourself Macrame with the needle. Um, so I'm going to show you that. Um, if you're using Kea or something thinner, <clears throat> when you pick up your needle, you don't have to use the big eye needle. Um, I'm going to just do one more so that I have even amount of stitches. So I started on this side and I'm ending on that side. Okay, so then I'm going to take um, the big eye needle um, and uh, this is a whole... A package of multiples that we've put together, but I'm going to get uh, one of these smaller ones. And the Big Eye Needle is um, very handy because it actually, and this is where I'm going to have to ask Kate to get me my um, other glasses, maybe. Um, how do, is this? Oh, this isn't a big eye needle. I'm trying to open it and it's not a big eye needle. Here's a big eye needle. And it really doesn't matter that it's this big. Um, I wish Kate would get back here so she, oh, there we go. So what I'm going to do, the, you can go in with, you can use it from either end. And I'm going to put it underneath um, the stitching. This is something that Allie Mori taught us. And I'm going to bring it up um, right, like right there. Not sh yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to open this end and I'm going to put the tail in and then I'm going to pull on this and this is where you do need a plier. Kate, would, yep. you, would you mind grabbing my um, bag? I need to get out my beading glasses. Oh, sure. I Your put, handbag? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to pull that. Did you see how I grabbed this? 
and I just pulled it up and then I'm going to pull this. You don't need glue for this unless you only have like maybe two or three stitches. Then I would definitely put just a little tiny bit of glue on the end. You can use your thread burner to um, get rid of this to sear it or you can use just a flush cutter like right there. Oh, no. yes, yes, yes. Bless you. You <laughs> even knew which pair of glasses it was. Okay, so taking off the computer glasses, putting on the... Oh, wow. <laughs> there Night you go. Day. Boy, okay. Now we're going to take this other end and do the same thing there. So... Oh, so you're... Um, the sliding Allie, it up, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. like Ali Mori. Mm -hmm. I love this. Now I can see that. Uh, I'm gonna get that right, okay. right close. And there. then I'm going to take the chain nose here. Pliers. And you like? I brought you these because you have oh, been loving I these. I have loved. I, yes, this new little. What do we call this? It's a flat. I don't flat nose. You guys are gonna. They're they're coming soon. Oh, coming very soon. We just ordered these, and this is just like my jam i love them they're small um you can they're travel not expensive. with them yeah 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 we're we're going to start carrying these really soon so i'm cutting that off okay i'm going to put my needle aside and be really careful with these needles because they're super sharp yeah here i've got a little uh, also if you needed to okay. put it into something so I've that got something there. that's in there mm -hmm. um we don't have to wax our thread because um, it is already waxed. If you find that when you're threading your beads, your end gets kind of frayed, you can uh, you could wax it or you can just go like that and then just pinch it together. Now what we have is we have eight threads that we can actually string on. So um, how much of this do you think I should do, Kate? Just a little bit? And, yeah. Okay. We're so. doing fine. Yeah. So you you work your magic. And also, you may want to show them you know how I, you do the um, the little discs and stuff, too. Okay. You know, I didn't bring the spindles in. Oh, let me get some. I'm so sorry. Where Do I need to grab some on the wall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I forgot the spindle beads. Thank you for putting me back mm -hmm. in the... I don't even know where the... There we go. Yeah. It's so nice having glasses that I can see through. Okay, so I'm starting okay. with okay. just... Okay, thank you, Kate. So I'm starting with uh, the little seed bead, and I'm going to have to angle cut with my snips. Let me just check while she's not here. Am I in the picture? Yes, I think I am. So while Kate's out of the room, you know her birthday's coming up, and I just have no idea what to give her. If you have any ideas, email me at Janice at beadshop.com. I need some ideas. So what I did... Um, is I did overhand knots. Um, and don't get scared when we say the word knot. I just did an over... Oh, thank you, Kate. I just did an overhand knot. And then I come in like this. Now, you can do it like all fancy. Um, but I just... This is how I do it. Kate, we've shown everybody with the all how to do mm -hmm. it, but I do it just like this. Right, with your fingers. I just I do it pull too. it up mm -hmm. like this. Then I pinch right above the knot. Mm -hmm. And I just pull it in. Just like that. Just nice. like that. And it just can be visually tight. It doesn't have to be, exactly. you know, like so tight that you're like, wait, what's going on? And this wax linen, we carry wax linen in a variety of colors, and we carry four-ply. So that's what this is. Mm -hmm. So if you take, split the plies apart to do any weaving or stuff like that, you have a double strand. Mm-hmm left. I don't think you want to go less than 
too. You want no, too twisted mm -hmm. because it loses all its strength. Now this time I'm going to make it loose on purpose and I'm going to show you it doesn't matter where it is. It's just, you know, just pull it in anywhere. It's not going to show and that's perfectly fine. If anything, it's it's a little maybe more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you do really need a bead. You have to just check that the, the bead you end you start and end with before the knot is going to not roll over the knot. So that's why an A dot is like the perfect size bead for this mm -hmm. um, with the four ply. So um so I'm going to say, well, I've done enough on that one. I'm going to try. Uh, I kind of don't know what to do next. So I'm going to take another one. And I always um, look at, I let the first strand inform what I'm going to do with the others. Um, and so uh, I'm looking at that one. And so I don't want to do exactly the same thing on this strand. I want to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... And these strands aren't split for this one. We're just saying that if you would want to split them for any yeah. reason, if you're weaving or whatever. But these are here at the button. You can see, I'll scoot that down, that the long... How, what's the length that you cut for these, Well, Janice? this I cut shorter, but mm -hmm. I would say cut them, tw cut four strands 24 inches each or 20 inches okay and then they those four strands come through the button come back down so you're working with eight strands, eight strands total. right mm -hmm. you could do less than this if you wanted mm -hmm. um so i'm starting with smaller beads i don't want them exactly the same so as you can see i put the two red ones there but eventually with eight of these you're going to have some that look similar mm -hmm. So I'm going to put my knot in again. And that's okay because all of the beads will kind of come together, right? So mm -hmm. you don't need to. You don't need to worry about mm -hmm. it. And I'm pinching it and just pulling it in. Pinch and pull. And I'm going to put one of these other melons. I love these melons with mm -hmm. their the washes, the brown wash and... Yeah, I and then too. I'm going to do this knot again. And I'm almost ready now for a spindle. So I pull the, the knot down. I let go of the knot. And then I gently pull it in. And here are the spindles. I think I'm ready for a spindle. Oh, that's not the Oh, sorry. I've got your snips right here. Oh, thanks. I stole them. Don't bogart the snips. <laughs> okay, so let's. Now the beads, the, sorry, the holes on these spindles are, they're fairly generous. They should all work, but you might find, like I did, that if it's a little tight on one end, turn it around and take it from the other. Oh, I want to be in the picture. So um, turn it around and take it from the other side. So if this side mm -hmm. is like not working, make sure you twist, have a nice angle cut, and then try it from the other side like that. And I think I'm ready right there for spindle. So what you can visually do, if you have one of the ultimate design boards, you can lay them out in the trough. If you don't, just use your design board or paper towel. And you can just go, okay, this is like how I want them. Let me push that up a little bit. Um, I won't do, if I can help it, I won't do something like that mm -hmm. where they're two actually right across from each other. I like it more like a waterfall. Think of it like rain or snow no two are exactly alike and then i will take the leaves and i'll just sort of kind of lay as, them out yeah visually, yeah, visually see where they go. and if you want to you could take a take your smartphone and take a picture mm -hmm. so you have sort of but you you want to you want to measure and you want to go okay that's about 
my length, I'm, I'm good. Um, because everything else you will have, you know, quite enough of that you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if you want to add these in, you know, um, you might want to just go, okay, I'm laying that out and then put them away or put them to the side um, and continue stringing. Yeah. And then that knot again, that Janice used to just, you know, kind of knotting in between the beads. It's just a little overhand. Yeah. Let me do it you again. You know, a little overhand knot. You know, if you go to uh, archive projects, mm -hmm. um, it's either under projects or learning. Mm -hmm. It's really in um, the project originally we did called Tin Cup. Mm -hmm. So it's a loop. You go through the loop. It's just an overhand knot. So I'm just... Um, if you are pearl knotting with griffin where you only have one thread or even two, this is really the knot that I use. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but on in tin cup, it really shows you how to get that knot up close to beads mm -hmm. that are separated. And so all I'm doing is I'm pinching and pulling. I'm pulling with this hand. Um, it, I've been doing it for so long, I don't even think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I... And this one will be right on... It's right on beadshop.com already. If you go to the project, or if you go to the homepage, you'll see a big photo of it. If you're watching this on re replay later, um, right now it's Wednesday, August 25th, but if you're watching it on replay later, um, you just go to our project section and go under bracelets under trails end, and you'll see this one. It's called Adobe. So that's where you'll find it. When you're uh, making a multiple strand bracelet or necklace, you don't really have to worry about, oh, I want, you know, I'm looking back on it now and I'm saying, oh, I really should have put, you know, the blue melon here. Mm -hmm. But when you have them all together, you're not going to be able to, the eye isn't able to say, mm -hmm. oh, you put two in a row. But as you're doing this, you're going to also notice that there's certain things you really like. Like you like, like I like the yellow and the yellow on, on either side of that pumpkin. Or I like the spindle with just the knot on each side. Mm -hmm. um, and so and you, you can repeat re that pattern. Yeah, yeah, you can repeat them. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm making my overhand knot. Mm -hmm. There I go. Can everyone see? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm just sort of pulling it down so that it's right over. So I could be up here. Let's undo this. And I'm just going to shimmy this down. And then I'm pinching right above it. And I'm pulling with my right hand. And everybody does it the way they want. Uh, you'll find one that works for you. And that's the knot. Okay, so I want to bring two together so that I can show everyone how I did sections of it. Where's... Oh, you have it. Okay. Do you want so, it right here? Do you want it? Uh, let me just mm -hmm. show everyone what I want to just demo right now is where, where I bring the threads together and then I'm doing with the ostrich shell or I'm doing with these yellow glass beads, these discs, how I go over and under. The other way I use them is I just also strung them in here. Um, and some of the packages, we, we mm -hmm. break them up. Some of them have square. They're not all round. It's just luck of the draw what you get. Okay, thank you for mm -hmm. that. Okay, so I am going to just string this so I can bring the two together. And um, you, you also, if you know you're going to do this, you do, you do not have to put an, um, 
an individual knot, you could wait and then knot the two together. Um, so you don't have to do that extra knot. But I, I like having the knot in there. So I'm going to just... Yeah, and the this. knots also add a little bit of visual interest yeah. to you know. Yeah, they do. It's like a bead on its own. Exactly. Um, do you have any thoughts, Kate, on um, when you're stringing multiple strand necklaces? Well, like we talked about with the piece that I'm wearing, we did that last week, I think, that big one. Um, I find like what you said, Janice, laying out your larger elements. I'm not really a laying out kind of gal when mm -hmm. it comes to stuff like this. But if you have like a finite number of, of like, what do I want to say, showcase beads, I guess, or things that, you know, have to really kind of show up nicely, then I think you want to lay them out and space those out. Mm -hmm. Everything else, like the filler beads, like you're using those melons and mm -hmm. even the 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 ostrich shells and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But your spindles are kind of your main showcase beads mm -hmm. along with those uh, leaves, right? Mm -hmm. So if they have a home already, if you know where those are going, then um, everything else just seems to fall into place pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now there's a question here. Julie has a question that says, can you use Ceylon? And we could string this with Ceylon. Sure. I would use regular Ceylon for it. Mm -hmm. And yes, I would, you could wax it. You mm -hmm. could uh, add a little bit of beeswax to that. Sure. But I think that the thinner Ceylon, the fine might be too thin because we're just using single strands here. So you want the heft of that thread to take the weight. Yeah, I think um, you could double probably fine Ceylon if you were using it, if your bead holes were large enough, but you'd just have to test to see what worked. Exactly. What would work? Um, so these are check glass beads and they fit on, um, they fit on the wax linen. They will fit on the regular Ceylon. I would also probably do the glue end Mm -hmm. of the of to, the need to know, stiffen them it, on to the zap. stiffen it mm -hmm. yeah so that um it's it's easier cuz it's not really a project that is intended to use a needle to right to, to double it over yeah. yeah so i want to just be aware that these are close i'm going to put a knot there so that uh, these two are going to go together And John's saying he likes how you are knotting those beads. It's um, a nice, it is a nice, um, just a nice technique. Yeah. Pardon my reach. So now I here. have the two, the knots in each end. I'm going to knot these two together. Um, the reason I knot them together is because of the, the in and out kind of uh, stringing that you do. If you don't have them knotted together, that bead that you string on can kind of flop and move mm -hmm. around. So the knot is kind of a, kind of brings everything together. It's, yeah, it's pretty essential. And when else would you knot, Janice? Just rent, if you're just going along along the single strand, you would just knot wherever you felt like you wanted a knot to be, correct? Yeah, wherever, uh, you know, oftentimes in many of the, the uh, necklaces that I make, I bring two, three threads together. And this is also um, a Helen Dietz um, mm -hmm. technique. We talked about her last week, didn't we? Yeah, it was we last did. week. Mm -hmm. um, and it's spelled D I E T Z. Z, I, I believe, yeah. And she was a well known beading artist in our community in Palo Alto. Um, and she made these extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, multiple strand necklaces that um, had really counterweights. Yeah. She was known for the counterweights down your back because they were so heavy. Yeah. And anyone could join the class <laughs> at any time. Yeah, she'd have a permanent class in her home in the Oakland Hills. She yeah. lived, and she would do things at the Oakland, uh, the Northern California Bead Society. She passed away, I think, in the early 2000s mm -hmm. at a very advanced age. But she kept beads everywhere in her house, including in the oven, because she said she <laughs> didn't have time to uh, 
to cook. All she wanted to do was was create. So when you'd go to her house and take this perpetual class that she would do every week, and some people joined her for years, uh, and some people would just join her for mm-hmm. a few sessions, mm-hmm. you could buy your you could buy beads from her, and you'd kind of yeah. poke around in little drawers or wherever she was. I want to make sure I'm in the picture. Yeah, there you for go. Every- So what I have done here is I've come through on either side of, you can do it with an I Ching coin, Mm -hmm. anything that has, that's like a disc. um, And I'm going to now pull it down. Yeah, just like that. Now in the old um, uh, African wedding aprons and the coin, uh, the, you know, the, the brass, the brass, right? Those brass. Those, they uh, would wear these rings. belts mm-hmm. that um, were their dowries, and if you wanted to do more than one, this is what happens. They start to you, you can get them. them. Up. Yeah, you line them up like this, and they will sit like on top of each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't want them to sit on top of each other, then you want to put a knot in here and then put another one on. But this should, um, if I'm doing it correctly, should sit underneath. I'm gonna put a third one on. So you, they're a little thick for this. Um, I'm gonna do them with the ostrich shell um, and then it'll be easier to see. But I am very interested in, and maybe it's my time of life, But I am very interested in going back and sharing the old techniques, the things that um, I grew up with from um, the the antique and vintage jewelry that my mother um, used to um, sell in her antique store. Mm -hmm. So I want to share with everyone things that I learned that I want to make sure are still going to get passed down. You know, it's weird to think that some of these things may not last. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm the, you know, the artist, but I'm certainly not, but um, so I'm going to put this and you see, this will, this will sit under like that. And yeah, there and, we go. Let me yeah. get a little tighter. And then, then it would have been um, a coin, If you get to the, um, which museum, um, well, there are many museums, but if you get to um, an African museum or in the book Africa Adorned, Mm -hmm. you will see this, you will see this technique. Um, Yeah, you went to the Museum of the African Diaspora, didn't you? Or was it the African American Museum, the new one in in D.C., I think, right? Everyone should get there, Every absolutely everyone. So I'm going to just fit these. Okay. So I put those three on. Um, You have to be a little careful with the ostrich shell. Um, some of them are a little thin, but there's my two strands that have come together, and now I can separate those. Um, which yeah, is separate really, them out and then yeah. just continue to string. Yeah. Um, what would you do, Kate, if you said, okay, I want to get rid of one thread. I want to just string on, just as an example, you wanted to drop that thread and you wanted to go further with this thread. How would you... Um, would you so if this was woven and you just wanted to go on with one more yeah let's yeah. just just as a you know <clears throat> it's it's an issue someone mm-hmm. wants to we're near the end of something mm-hmm. we don't want to end with all of these yeah. threads how would you drop it what, what I would, would do is way? I would add a little bit of glue I would add a little bit of the GS hypo mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. Um, and then I just let it sit I'd let this sit out because sometimes also what I do if this is the end of the necklace mm-hmm. I'll take this thread back. Uh huh. And I'll bring it back this way. Uh huh. And finish it off somewhere there. But if I don't want to bring it back, mm-hmm. you know, and tie it off, I'll mm-hmm. glue and clip mm-hmm. just there, and it'll be fine. Especially like on that wax linen, mm-hmm. um, that will um, 
nothing will come apart there. Right. But I like going like that weird kind of back and forth kind mm -hmm. of thing um, with the threads. Again, another Helen uh, yeah. technique, mm -hmm. you know, where you just have the threads. And, and I think that's one of the places where I learned, you know, I took a class with her for just, I don't know, maybe it was a couple of months every might have been every Saturday or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, she would just say, don't go too far into the piece. Mm -hmm. You know, be in the now as you are stringing, right? Mm -hmm. So don't think too far ahead. Just So I'm doing something like totally random. Yeah, you could. You, I'm you just could taking, it Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. taking these two and which is what we're going to do on the, uh, the strap leather is why not do something else? So I'm going mm -hmm. to, um, just for a minute, you can do anything with your threads. This will shorten if you're, you know, that's why you want to make sure you're very generous. This will shorten this thread. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's kind of fun, just bringing three together. I'll mm -hmm. do one more, and then I'm going to separate them out and continue. Um, and what are you working on, Kate? Well, you were telling me that you wanted me to do some kind of knotted closure. So well, you, you keep you keep stringing. Give me okay. two shakes, okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I'm here in separate. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to separate these. And uh, I just want to show you, I clipped, I clipped at this end with the clamper, the, the center thread so that it would be stable. And I want to be right in the picture. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to start stringing again. So no two pieces that you do are going to be alike. They're all, they're all going to be, um, unique and you and it'll only be your dna your th own thumbprint that um that's in the design that's what makes uh, jewelry making so wonderful is unlike other many other crafts this is all um we're not, we're hoping you don't follow an exact pattern. We're hoping you do your thing. And um, I once made a necklace that one of the staff needed to do a handout for. And um, even though she copied it bead by bead, it didn't look like my necklace. It's so no one can copy you. You are an original, and we want you to do your thing. So I'm just going to put the overhand knot here, and then I want to go back, and I want to put a leaf on pretty soon and show you how good those look. So I'm pinching and pulling it in. I'm using these fingers to pull on the thread. Um, I'm almost ready. Oh, great. So thanks for being patient with me, everybody. No, we're... Kate, I'm just, whatever you do... You're so funny. Could I have the, the snips? snips there again? There you go. Thank you. This is really coming along nicely, Oh, Janice, good. I think. Good. Well, Your don't tease there. us for too long. No. I won't. No, I meant your piece. Oh, this one. Mine's oh. a hot mess. Yeah, but yours no. looks great. Why is yours a no, hot no, mess? No, no, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. I bet it's going to be great. So let's do, I'm going to put maybe one of these up here. Um, now I do this. We're so quiet. I can't I believe we're. I'm just so into doing this. I every I think everybody else is super <laughs> into this too. <laughs> I just want to sit and bead. Okay. All right, there we go. This is what I'm going to do. Are okay. you going to show us? Mm -hmm. 
I just had to, I had to make it up. Okay, so I think I'm going to do a spindle here. So I want to get that nice and pointed. There we go. And I make sure it's not directly across from this. Looks good. So I was going to do this design originally with just pearls. Mm -hmm. And I found that you can't use wax linen, but you can use a griffin. Mm -hmm. The pearls were pretty. Do you still have yeah. that section? I do. Where they're, is it? They're on my desk. Oh, let me go get them. And, and I, I, I want you to show those, and then I'll show. We've got a okay. little bit of time, and then okay. I'm ready. To, okay. But I want to grab them just so okay. people can see what your design process. Okay. I would love to do this in pearls because I think it would be really pretty. So right now, I know I have a turquoise melon there, but should I put one of these? I'm sort of thinking I want to put a leaf in now. So, And the way that you could finish this off, because I've been thinking about this, mm -hmm. is you could finish it like I finished the piece, the pearls here that I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. And then people will see it. I'm going to take this necklace off. You could finish it off kind of like this to bring all of these together. So let me move that out of the okay. way. I'm going to put this next to it and this next to it. Okay. It'll be on this background, but that's okay. I'm going to okay. give you that. I'm going to take this out. Okay. Away for the moment. So I did, I started out when I was back in Virginia thinking, how can I do this? I love this project, but I wanted to originally just do it more upscale mm -hmm. with pearls. And so this is the size two, mm -hmm. and these have that knot, like the tin cup knot. And I was planning originally of doing two se separate sections that would wrap around. Um, that's as far as I got. So this is... This is basically what I wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think I'm still going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but you could also use that, like if that were part of a necklace or something, mm -hmm. the closure that I did here with yes. this loop. Yes. You could bring all of that together. Yes. And do and this. And silk wrap exactly. that section. Right? Yes. Yes, you could. Might look kind of interesting. Yes. So I will finish this, okay, just so thought. that we can do it. Yeah, it's um, pretty. Yeah, those thank you. Pearls. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do and is... And this is the one you did last week. It is. What is it called? Do you remember? No, no. idea. The Ocean Blues, uh, okay. what the Ocean Blues collection yeah. I did. But it's there. <clears throat> it's on the homepage. Okay. So I'm going to kind of... I'm, I'll move get this. me out of the way. Okay. No, you're fine. I'm just going to move the Okay. Camera. So here's, let me show you what we've got. So Janice was like, okay, I want you to close this up and think about how we're going to close it. Mm -hmm. So I've got the, so I started thinking about this. Okay. And so I, when Janice was stringing, I started to, um, I've got to get that. It's like a weight. Um, I measured. Okay. And I just, wrapped this around and wrapped it around once whoops just so i had an idea of how this would close mm -hmm. okay and so i calculated this kind of like so right so i've got i don't know maybe that's an inch and a half or something like mm -hmm. with that loop and i still don't really know how much i need to close but it's about there. You want me to measure okay. it for you? Not really, because okay. I'm just going to kind of do this off okay. the cuff. Then what I did was I did a piece of, got another one of the leather cords, the 1.5 mm -hmm. millimeter, and I macrameed so that the loop that I made will go over that button. Terrific. Okay. And now I can kind of look and see how much business 
Mm-hmm. You know, how much here? Yeah. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to do a fancy knot here. Then I'm going to just, I'm not even, I have no idea what I'm doing here yet, mm. but I, I don't care. I'm not going to worry about it yet. What I'm going to worry about is how I'm going to bring these two together. Now I could bring these two together under a large hold bead like this, mm-hmm. like Janice has here. I could macrame them together. I could silk wrap them together, but Janice wanted a knot in there. So I'm going to tie a Chinese button knot. Yes. You see, ask okay. and you shall receive. That's right. And Stabili was asking, did she miss a discussion on the bracelet that you're wearing? Put your uh, wrist back in there. Uh, Stabili, you can go back and join and we rewatch the beginning and we talk about this piece that Janice yeah, is wearing. Yeah, we take it off just so. So you can see we didn't have time. I didn't have time to do all of this macrame here like Janice did started. So I just went in, I measured, and I started to close it off. Because okay. we can go back and macrame. Yeah, we'll go back and, and add. yeah, add whatever we yeah. want along this. But I wanted to show you how I would how I would do this. Okay. So um, to close it, I just arbitrarily made a loop, whatever size I liked. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to hold it through that loop. I held it through here, lashed it onto the board like so. And then I got my, my little clamper. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Let's I'm going to turn it. Edge how it's, how you I'm going to turn it on the other side here. Okay. Okay. On the back. And I'm going to clamp it on this side just for a moment. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to see right here is how I'm going to start to close this off. Now, I cut a shorter piece of thread here because I didn't really know what I was doing. So I cut a shorter piece. I probably have enough here to cover, but see how I tapered this down, how I cut one piece of leather off here. And then this piece of leather is a little bit longer. So I'll continue on with my macrame until I get maybe down to here. Now, if I look at this and I go, oh, you know what? This thread isn't really long enough. doesn't matter. I can add thread Mm -hmm. right here. So let me add some thread. Okay. So I'm going to reel off. This is about... I don't know, uh, 30 inches of thread about. You want to be generous yeah. because that's quite a length. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to have to add thread again, though I can. It's easy. So I'm going to tighten these threads down, and if they don't reach all the way across your board, it's no big deal. Get another clamp, clamp them on. Okay, so everything's tight. So now I'm just going to start my macrame by coming around the back, finding the center, <clears throat> seeing where I left off with my macrame, which is this side. So I'll just start with my loop and it's, I'll just pretend that they're attached, right? That it's the old mm-hmm. tails and not the new ones. What I do want to make sure though, when I tie that first, whoops, I missed it. When I tie that first macrame knot, I want to make sure and, um, make sure that everything is nice and flat and not Mm -hmm. twisted under that first knot. So see that there, how it just comes together. Then I'll continue. You could also use the needle technique, bring the ends up. I could. And then just start a whole new Mm -hmm. one. I could. I am not as like I did that. I'll show you on my other one. And for speed, I just thought I'd do it this way. And then I can take these, I can just cut them down Mm -hmm. there and I don't need to disturb those stitches at all. In the five stitch uh, project that Nicole Anderson did, we show how you can keep your threads down, macrame over them, and then if they're long enough, bring them out again Mm -hmm. and use them again without even cutting them. Right, exactly, you just carry them along. I did that backwards. Sorry, I meant kind of a funny angle, but I'll show you guys, see how that, just comes in, and then as I reach where I cut it off, you just kind of have to, see, you want to make sure that your stitch doesn't go under that leather. It needs to hide that leather. So I just want to be really mindful about tying that stitch. So see that there? So I will just continue. Let me tie a couple more. 
and then we'll call that a day. And then I'll show you how I'm going to work the closure. So there's this. And this one here, this other strand, mm -hmm. you don't have to, like I could cut it a little bit sooner. Hopefully that's right. You could also leave it showing. I could. I could. There's that. Hopefully my loops are on the correct side here. So once I've done, I've kind of gone past everything, mm -hmm. tightened everything up. There we go. And you're going to see this taper just a little, but that's okay with me. You can come in. And again, you could carry this down, like if I if these were longer and I wanted to pick up that color, you know, and, you know, so you could stripe it, right? I could have something that's blue here, mm -hmm. then the teal, then the blue, then the teal, if everything was long enough. But I'm just going to come in and thread burn these out. There we go. Get rid of those. and then just continue my macrame. You could also, to kind of um, mask this tapering, you could get beads with larger holes. You could put one of our sliders there. You could do anything you wanted, really. But I just wanted to show you how we would it's continue that It's not really down. going to it's not really going to show. Mm -mm. I mean, in the, I think it's fine. Yeah. Now, how do you uh, end these ends when you're ready to do that? Yeah, so we could. So what I'll do, what Allie does here, I know that you are pulling your pieces up. Yeah, do um, you need the needles? I've got it right here. Okay. So you can use, um, this is the big eye needle mm -hmm. that's here. And I was finding it a little difficult. You can, like, work the big right. eye needle up and through. What I will actually do here is I'm going to lay this needle on the top of what I'm doing so that I know when, <clears throat> when I macrame this, I'm kind of macraming the needle into it so I don't have to find a place to shove my needle through, if that makes sense, okay? So just, just go with me on this for a second. And I'm still tying it pretty tightly, but there's going to have to be room for this needle to slide. Okay. And I find that I have a tendency to catch the tip of the needle in the thread as it's going underneath that yes. tunnel. Yeah. And I'll split it. Mm. And, and this way you won't. Yeah. And sometimes also, like if you're using these big eye needles and you really have to pull them, where that needle comes together mm -hmm. to the point is sharp. So it can cut your thread as you pull you know, it through. I didn't know that. It's right, real sharp. I did it. I did it when I did this one. I'll show you. So I, I, um, I had to re and so I had to pull the thread out and it was... It wasn't bad, but see here? So now I've mm -hmm. covered that other one. You just have to just ignore that the needle is there and your macrame over the top. Okay, I'm going to do two more. One and two. Okay, so now <clears throat> we're going to slide these suckers through. So I'm going to unpin this. Okay, and I'm going to open up this big eye. Like that. That's why it's called a big eye needle. And see, that's where that little needle is kind of sharp right there. So I'm just going to come in. And I need to have room here. I don't want it to be tight. I need a lot of eye coming through, number one, so I can see it. And I'm going to be putting them through from the same direction, either from the top or the bottom. I'm going to go from the bottom and up. Okay. And there needs to be some slack here. Okay, so now I'm just going to come in and I'll pull this and I'll pull it. Maybe it will help with my plier. But you kind of have to walk it 
underneath here. This also isn't in my focal range, but it'll come. There we go. If you're just pick, whoops, Whoa. there it goes. Yeah. See, it's there. I was trying to be really gentle and it just went. So see I how found it, it was very difficult to bring the two up together. That's why I did them individually. Oh, you could. I mean, you could even put two needles in. But see how if you pull, once it's through, I can pull these other legs through. Uh -huh. And then I can get rid of that needle. And uh, then yeah. I can come in and just say, okay, here's that one, right? Mm -hmm. Here's this one. And find the one that goes to this side. Pull that over. And just tighten them up one and then the other I want that little space to tighten if I have to put my finger on it and pull yeah there we go so see how nice mm -hmm. that looks mm -hmm. and so they're under there yeah so they're then, not going anywhere mm -mm, they're not going to go anywhere and I'll come in and you could thread burn or you can clip so I'll just come in and clip these down. There's a little. There we go. So that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's nice and sturdy. It's not mm -hmm. going anywhere. Right. It's fine. And you can't really tell that it tapers, right? And so it really is that you don't, you do want to get the exact right tension for this so that you're not macrameing too tightly over that needle so that your needle will um will slide through and you can see the needle's fine you can just kind of put the needle back mm -hmm. together and then it's ready to go mm -hmm. okay but that little tunnel just needs to have just enough tension so now i'm going to do this kind of quickly to close it so <clears throat> I'm going to take that off and we're just going to let that sit. So what I did previously while Janice was stringing was I made a little length of leather. I cut a length. This length is about 20 inches. Okay. And I macrameed this length, which I will also measure two inches to go around the button. Yeah. About one and three quarters and what I did was I came in and I just made sure that this closed okay so now I do a um, this tutorial in Kate's classic knots um, this Chinese button knot so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pretend that I've got a, a pendant or something over here, okay? And you can watch me do that. Uh, I'm going to do it a little bit quickly, but you can watch that um, tutorial. It's, it's a classic bead shop knot. So essentially what you do is you have two cords here with this loop, right? And if this were going over a pendant, your pendant would be coming out of that loop. So now we always work from behind when we're doing the Chinese button knot. So I take my back cord, I come around, and I wrap it around my left thumb and I place it on my other cord so there's a little window here, okay? And that's the last you're gonna touch this cord for a second, okay? You're gonna take this other cord, it's the cord that is showing through the window here. Now again, we're gonna work from behind. I'm gonna come around the back, make that loop, and like we did last time when we were doing that little um, Celtic knot or the Josephine knot, we were weaving in and out of the window. So I go in the window, down with my cord, under that center cord, and up and out through the middle. And what we've got is this little pretzel. Now you're almost home with this. I'm going to continue tying with this cord. This is the, the my working cord that I just wove through that little that little window. I'll bring it again behind this thread. See this little diamond here? I'm going to come up the side of the diamond 
and tighten it. So now that little knot has an ear on that side. Now I finally pick up this cord that I haven't touched since I made that initial loop. I'll come around, I'll go from behind, and I'll come up through that diamond on the opposite end, just like I did the other one. So I look at this knot and I see that, yep, it's symmetrical, it's good to go. And I will come in and I'll pull it tight. And before I pull it too tight, I need to walk this down. So I'm gonna do that by coming in. This is where I need to be able to see. You wanna bring it nope, closer? I'm good, I'm just gonna lean in here. But the way that you bring that in the way that you tighten the knot is you just work this cord through. So I see where that cord is. See how, whoops, sorry, you can't. See how I kind of wiggle it and I go, oh yeah, it's this one. So I'm gonna pull it. And then it's this one. So I'm gonna pull it. And then it's this one. And I'll pull it. And then that should be maybe one more. I knew you'd have a trick one. up your sleeve. Right, and so now I think it's that one, okay? So now I'll tighten this side. So I kind of push it and I go, yep, there it is. So I'll grab this. And so see how now I brought my loop in tight and I'll turn it and I'll follow that cord. You could also just do a silk wrap right? You don't have to you be You could, but fancy. I, wanted, I wanted fancy. And you wanted fancy. Yeah. So I urge you, I'm not going to go over and over the Chinese button cord knot here because we have that video tutorial for you to watch, but look at what a charmer, look at how nicely. It's just perfect. That sits. I want to, there's a little bit of slack there. If this is going to be on the piece, it's got to be exactly Right. Let me just get that in there. Where Looks good cord? to me. Yeah, it does look it does look pretty good. So I do. I will say. I'm gonna get a little closer to me, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna close it off. Yeah. So this, and okay. then what I'll do the rest of the week while I'm here is I will finish all this that off. That macrame. Yeah. And I'll finish off the other bracelet. So here it is. Look so this that. is ready. Isn't okay. that it's a nice little closure, yeah. I think. Yeah. Right. So now in the traditional trails end, uh, what we've done, and there's the one with the white padres, Janice, that I have no I idea where it is. It. I couldn't find it. But essentially, what we could do is we could make a loop like this and we could silk wrap mm -hmm. underneath this, right? Um, we could, um, you know, we could do a bunch of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to work it backwards. So that looks nice, mm -hmm. right? Like this. And I'm going to think about what I want this to look like. So... Do I want it to be like that, like a loop to loop? Do I want, whoops, sorry. There we go. Mm. I thought I put my phone on um, do not disturb, but obviously I didn't. I could bring it through like Janice did, right? With mm -hmm. those other things, which actually might look a little bit better. and maybe silk wrap it here. Mm -hmm. I also thought about just putting it through this one mm. and kind of being weird and tying it mm -hmm. like that, right? That's it. So, um, so let me wrap it around. You want to show that closure while, while I'm so this making one, this happen? Yeah, so this one was done as we started talking about this loop is a separate little um, component. Um, and there is also another one up here where the button is also done 
with a separate little component. And then the wax linen is brought through here, tied. Well, it's, we start actually, I started on this end where I did an overhand knot of all of them then did all the threads. Came down here, came through um, this, this big um, ring, this jade ring, came back through, wrapped it around several times, separated the threads, and then knotted it and glued it. And when you're wearing it, you, you don't even notice that. Mm -hmm. And that's how that one's done where this, the story is making these separate little components. And you can use these throughout a design. You can make five or six of them, but just think about where you, you know, as you make them, you could make a chain of them mm -hmm. and make a necklace. So you can see I very quickly, as yes. we were doing this, I tied a second one. Oh, okay. To take up some slack. Now this could also be a bead. Mm -hmm. here so let me just and again if you go to bead shop because I'm not showing you how to tie these really right now no if you go to Kate's classic knots and you watch the broadcast where I tie these I show mm -hmm. you how to tie them in a row like this and everything so let me get it a little closer to my we also have to measure my I eyes haven't. We haven't finished measuring, so we can do that. Yeah, I kind yeah. of measured. So I did I did just a very quick little measurement um, mm -hmm. as I was wrapping this around. So um, I thought it looked, I thought it was about right. You know, I'm having trouble tightening this, so I'm just going to take this out. Mm -hmm. And you'll silk wrap it or something. Here. Okay. That's what we're going to do because I can't. But you could tie a row of those. I think it would look mm -hmm. good. So Terry's saying she needs to practice knotting. Yes, knotting is always... Um, it's the backbone it of is stringing. Fun. It is fun. Oh, okay. So before I close this up, you guys, <laughs> as always, Janice and I always like to go long. Okay, I'm going to bring this back into the picture for just a second. But you know what we've been doing lately is we've been doing these fun giveaways. Mm. So Janice jo dove into her stash of yes. flat leather cord, and we put them on in this little, um, this fun little doohickster organza bag. Yeah. Okay. So as you know, uh, when uh, you're commenting, if you're commenting over on any of our, if our, you're commenting on our Facebook group, which is the bead table, if you're watching it from the bead table, you need to make sure that you grant StreamYard, which is our streaming service, permission to see your name um, before you leave your comment to enter the giveaway so we know who it is. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or on our Facebook page, you don't need to do that. So you, uh, we already know who it is. But what you're going to do is we're going to choose someone uh, to win this Janice's prize packet of her mm -hmm. favorite colors with the flat leather. So what you're going to do while I am closing this off, you're going to use hashtag leather in the comments to enter this giveaway. Okay, and giveaway entries are only accepted on our live broadcast on 8-25-21. So what you want to do while I'm doing this and before Janice and I sign off, we'll run our little giveaway program and we will choose a winner. So enter hashtag leather in the comments to enter our giveaway. Hashtag leather. So get going with that now. So now let me show you. So here's okay. this guy. This and what I think I will do is I will bring this around and oh. I'm going to bring it just through here like this. Uh -huh. And I am going to add just a silk wrap. Mm -hmm. I think below this. Okay. Super easy, right? So again, to make sure that it fits, I'm going to wrap it around my wrist. Call her if you want some help. And I will. And I'm going to come in. And I'm going to see where this closes, right? Mm -hmm. Pardon my hands here. I'll get them out of the way in just a second. And then I'll get my looped over th cords here. See that? And I'll bring them around and I'll say, 
this needs to be closed about about right there mm -hmm. right I can kind of feel it so I know here's my end so I'm gonna unwrap all this I know it's there undo this grab this so now this needs to be caught in there. This is my little space. I want to make sure everything's mm -hmm. flattened. And if I'm going to silk wrap this, okay. What are you looking for? Uh, I want a piece to silk wrap. Here's a piece. It's kind of short. Do you, do you think that's long enough? I think so. Okay. We'll, we'll find out. It'll be the smallest silk wrap ever. But I want to make sure that it's laying like flat on top of each other, right? So it's mm -hmm. not twisted under there. And where I start my silk wrap, you guys, is right there below that button. So make sure as I'm wrapping this that you guys are entering the hashtag leather should be in your in the comments here. Hmm. I don't know Maybe why it's, it's not... hard to silk wrap and do this at the same time. Do you want me to silk wrap while you do that? Yeah, you silk wrap that closed right okay. there. And hang on, I'll give away tool. Um, oh, let me see here. Hang on one second, you guys. Uh, as Jan put, go ahead, JP, right underneath. The, oh, sorry. The thing. I'm going to make sure that our giveaway tool is working. Bear with me here as Janice silk wraps over. Let me take this out of the stream and let me try and add it to the stream again. Bear with me here just a second while I do that. So the most important thing when you're doing this mm -hmm. is just going around side by side, even pressure and tension. Um, you want one laying right next to the other. And then when you get to where you want on the loop, pinch the end there we go. and bring it through the loop. There and then go. I'm going back to the, where I started. I'm going to pull on this, and it, when it works, it works. It looks like a kind of a gopher going underneath the grass. There, you see it's slipping right into you want it right in the middle. If you pull too hard, go. it's going to come out on this end. And then I take both ends. Look at how nice and neat and that I is. Pull Kate also shows how you can pull it with the pliers. Mm -hmm. Just be careful you don't pull it so <clears> hard you pull you rip your cord. I'm but a little further but this way. Ceylon, there you go. Ceylon is really very forgiving. Mm -hmm. and there you go. And then all you do is either um, could I have the snips? Yeah. You're gonna clip all that away. Huh? I'm gonna clip it off. I'm gonna do it under tension with a, like a flush cutter. Nice. And then I take the other one and I do it under tension. And look at that puppy. Isn't that? It's really pretty. I love that. And, and you could these, use those tails. Yeah. Let's leave the tails mm -hmm. on and I'll make something that works with it. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to do something else here. Right. To close, to keep to them make, together. And, and to embellish it. Mm -hmm. And we'll show that next week. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Looks good. I'll leave it here and then Claire will photograph mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah. And then we never got to this, which is... Well, um, we can show that on Friday. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We'll show that some more on Friday. Yeah. But essentially, you guys will be able to see in the project map, this is just the flat macrame mm -hmm. that Janice added um, the beads to. And mm -hmm. you can see that blue really shows through. But we'll pick this back up on Friday. Okay, okay I'll for have free it done tip Friday. Then. Okay. I'll have it done. So let me add, let's go ahead and put this. Um, I want to see a winner. I know. I want to add this to the. Um, let me solo that. There we go. There's that drawing. Okay. So uh, let me do this we're going to go ahead and we're gonna we've got 86 entries wow is that the most we've had i don't know we always get up there all right so the final last hashtag leathers and i'm gonna hit the button there we go and our winner is dessa so, Dessa, what you are going to do is you are going to email your mailing information right to info at beadshop.com. I will put this little leather um, uh, mix that Janice put together in a mailer, and it will go out to you super quick. So congratulations. Yes. That's fun. For that. That's yes, so that fun. was fun. Alrighty, so I'm going to, uh, you can see I've taken off all my jewelry and <laughs> everything now. Uh, let me do this and let me solo us there and let me move us over. There we are. And yeah. let me get the comments back up. There we are. Great. Well, it looks like everybody was excited. I'm just looking at any. No, I did include YouTube. YouTube was there. It was the YouTube. Uh, I think Dessa was watching on on YouTube. So uh, I think she was a YouTube watcher, that little one on there. So it was on all of our streams. So, but keep watching because yeah. we will do them. Uh, yes, everybody's, everybody's included yes. when we do that drawing. So wherever we're broadcasting, um, that's the fun thing right. about this. Right. It, it streams everywhere and we get to. And everyone on YouTube mm -hmm. actually is automatically mm -hmm. admitted. It's Facebook that you have to approve StreamYard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just the group, but yep. So, um, yep, so there there we go. What a fun day. It was fun. Did you have good time? I had a great time. Yeah. I'm, I love being here working with you and playing with beads and stringing. Yeah, and, yeah it was it's... fun. We had a good time. Well, I will say to everybody, let me go just here. You can find us always at our social on our Instagram feed at beadshop.com. You can go join us at the Bead Table, which is our Facebook group where we love to see you hanging out with us and uh, hanging out with each other. There's a lot of really wonderful um, uh, comments and shares and projects over there. It's really great um, to see all of you there creating such a wonderful community. And of course, if you are watching us right now on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button. Yes, Because please. we really, really appreciate all of your support there. And of course, you can find all of the information on the broadcast uh, on from the broadcast today from the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website so go over sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts giveaways and new products because janice i have something new coming friday what you know what i put together yesterday Oh. oh, right. So we're going to show that. Oh, do not miss Friday. And we're going to show this. It's going to be good times. Do not miss Friday. Kate has something up her sleeve. I do. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. It's fun. And it's something totally different that we've never done before. Yeah. Yeah. So you, do you like how I put my necklace yes. on while I was it doing all wonderful. that? Wonderful. Um, okay. Well, okay. I'll see you on Friday. Okay. Janice and I will be back on Friday um, for before she goes Lies, back yeah. yep goes back to the east coast yep. so stay safe everybody stay creative and we will see you on friday thank yeah. you so much for thank watching you. and thank good you times. Kate, for thank having you. me well, bye well you're the boss you can do this anytime <laughs> it's okay all right everybody talk to you soon